reflecting on a busy week at the club, just how delighted are you to welcome back uh, or welcome 14 signings to the, to the football club? Well, I can't remember a season where we've had 14 signings when the season isn't officially over yet. So clearly I'm delighted that we've got the foundations down early and allow uh, Mickey, the manager, to really start work on them so we can kick the season off on a high with a fully fit squad. Most of the players I'm delighted to say know each other, they've played with each other in many years. So hopefully coordinating the style of play um, that Mickey wants to play shouldn't be too difficult. But it's, it's really great that we've got the foundations down this early this year. Yeah. Can you just explain how much hard work has, has gone in behind the scenes to make these signings possible? Because as you say, they've came in uh, well, quickly, really quickly because this last season hasn't ended yet. Well, clearly um, things have happened very quickly. Uh, because we really couldn't do anything until the season ended because most of the players were on contract with the previous clubs. So, um, as you say, within 10 days, we've got all of these players committed. The main thing that I'm delighted about is that all the players seem very happy to be back here. Clearly, everyone knows the history of what happened two years ago. And um, I'm delighted that, although some fans might I think it takes a long time for the wheel to turn. The wheel has turned and now we've got people who are really committed to Blythe um, back again. And when you've got players who are committed to the club, you always get that extra percentage out of them when they're playing on the park. Yeah. And how determined were you uh, this summer to try and get the club pushing in the right direction again after a, a difficult couple of seasons on the pitch? Uh, it's been difficult on the pitch, it's been difficult off the pitch. Um, I'm trying to put all of that behind me and clearly that's the reason why we've made this real effort to get the squad signed up early this year so we can really get off on the right foot. Hopefully we'll keep the fans happy. Um, trying to put a budget together this season has been really difficult because we really haven't got a clue. Even to this day we haven't any guidelines from the league as to exactly what crowds are going to be allowed into the ground. Things are looking really good, I'm delighted to say, not just for the football club, but for the whole country. Um, and uh, I can only hope that we don't have restrictions placed upon us and uh, we can break the 25% capacity barrier. That would be really good. <laughs> yeah, you've shown, obviously, you've shown your commitment to the club by uh, providing the funds to bring the players back to the club. How much do you hope now that supporters or back uh, packing out Croft Park come the first game of the season, if that is possible uh, for Covid regulations? It's vital that the crowd come back. Um, no football club can depend on one person. Um, that, that might sound like a daft thing to say, bearing in mind the fact that just about every club in non-league football depends on a benefactor. In fact, I don't think it's even non-league football. I think it might even go up to Division 2 and Division 1, that if you haven't got a good chairman, um, your football club won't survive because the economics of football um, when it's competing with all other kinds of entertainment at the minute um, it's extremely difficult. Um, I'm hoping that the old faces that everyone knows and loves who are back here um, most of them were involved in the uh, FA Cup exploits at Hartlepool and various other places over the years that that will attract the fans to come back and hopefully we can have a really good year this year not only in the league but clearly in the FA Cup, which is the one thing that I know my colleague Paul at Marine and other colleagues at Chorley have witnessed this year, it's transformed the economics of their two clubs. Let's hope we can do it again after 2009 and 2014. Yeah. How important is it to have fans in the stadium from a, from a business point of view as well, as I say, in terms of revenue and, and as well as supporting the lads on the pitch as well, so how important is it? Oh, yeah, of course the economics are very important but playing in an empty stadium I'm sure it goes from the Premier League down to our level it, it's not a good experience I'm sure for the players um, uh, uh, there's different views on how it affects it but certainly at our level there's nothing better than the crowd behind the goal pushing the team on if they're in front it pushes them further if they're behind it just encourages them to give that extra percentage to uh, make sure the team performs at the end of the day. And most crowds 
at, at, at our level accept the fact that there are ability issues with different players. But as long as the crowd see everybody on the team giving their best for 90 minutes of every game, that's what the crowd are looking for. Yeah. And, and a few supporters have asked uh, how it's been financially possible to bring these players back to the club. Is there anything you can shed budget-wise in terms to answer uh, supporters' questions on that? No, the budget is the biggest unknown factor that any football club is going to face in the coming season. Um, will people be prepared to turn up? Um, most non-league clubs, I uh, have to say, have got a, a split of the crowd and there are a lot of uh, older people, I use the term loosely because older people are quite a bit younger than me <laughs> as it happens, um, but whether they are prepared to come out, we have got an excellent environment at non-league football and indeed at football anyway because we're in the external atmosphere, there's always a wind blowing, particularly up here in the northeast. So the risks are really, really low and I would encourage everybody to come along, um, particularly bring a mate who has never been to a football match before and to bring the kids to get them used to getting back involved with football as it should be, where people are jostling around on the, turn, on the uh, terraces, um, shouting and bawling at each other, with perhaps just a little bit of social distancing involved. <laughs> so just on the 1899 club, uh, how much would you encourage supporters to... To, um, if, to, to get involved in it? Well, the 899 Club has been absolutely fantastic, despite the fact that we've had two really tough seasons uh, where matches haven't even taken place for a lot of the time. The members of the 899 Club have continued to commit uh, every month to the cause, and anyone who really wants to demonstrate that commitment to, to the cause should be joining the 899 Club, and along with season ticket holders. Um, it really does give us a measure of what the commitment to the town is, to the club. Um, I'm not sure that we've actually finalised what the monthly draw will be for this season for the 1899 club, but I'm sure we'll be confirming that shortly. And I'm sure um, that the, the members who do attend match days in the sponsors lounge, they always seem to have a fantastic time when they come up here and see what it's all about in the sponsors lounge. And hopefully they could spread the word to their employers about what the benefits to staff would be by uh, encouraging. So it, it's 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 got a multifaceted uh, aspect to it. The 899 club, the fact that they can demonstrate what happens up here on a match day, um, and encourage other people to come along and sponsor the games, um, along with all the other sponsorship activities we've got. Does 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 that usually go to Michael Nelson's budget as well, or can it be used for for no, other things? No, we're very strict. The 899 club only goes on the playing budget. Uh, we made that clear to the, the, the people who are committed to the club, none of it goes to administration. We've got to raise all the other administration uh, money uh, through our normal uh, sponsorship activities. But I can guarantee that every penny that the 899 club members make goes to Michael for the playing budget. With, with the squad that's in place now, plus a few more to come, just what are your initial aims for the, for the season? Well, Put quite simply, to be better than we've done in the last two seasons. <laughs> I think um, if, if we're comfortably in the top third of the table, I'll be delighted. If we're challenging at the top, I'll be faced with a lot more difficult decisions than I've been faced with over the last two seasons. But as long as the crowds come along, the club will support the team to go whatever level um, the, the club is capable of going, with the support of the, the community of Blythe, Cranlington and uh, Bellington. It's been an exciting few months for the for the club off the field as well because we launched the, the academy uh, plus the soccer camps over at Easter. Does that just show that the club's trying to progress off the field as well as on it as well? Yeah, we've got various community initiatives. I'm absolutely delighted that uh, the first session that we had over the Easter holidays, kids, we were all subscribed quite frankly with kids. Not only with the kids, but with the walking football that we've got going on three days a week now um, on the, the 3G pitch. Um, we've, we've taken some video footage of that which will be going out on the website shortly. Um, any elderly people over 50s, considerably younger than me, um, who want to really uh, show what they used to do when they were kids, um, they should be coming along. A bit of exercise is fantastic for anybody at any age. Um, the college team performed really well under Mickey last year. 
we've uh, put another team in this year and we're going in the National College League. Um, and I'm delighted to say that two or three of the kids who were playing in the college team have actually made the debut for the first team. What could be a better advert for the college than to say that two, three, four of the lads who played in the college team have actually kicked the ball for Bly Spartans? That's a real feather in the cap for the academy teams. And then just finally on season tickets as well, they'll be going on, on sale soon. How much would you encourage supporters to, you know, to, to buy them and you know, come back and support the lads next year? Well, whether people buy a season ticket or whether they just turn up every week, um, the important thing is that they're here. The commitment is obviously measured by the number of season tickets that we sell, and I would hope we might be able to break previous season's records this year. Uh, the details will be going on uh, um, online shortly. We've got an online electronic ticketing system in place now. Hopefully that will uh, make things easier uh, for people to buy season tickets and indeed to buy match day tickets uh, for a regular game on an ad hoc basis. But certainly the sale of season tickets really does give us an indication of what the commitment of the town is to the club. So I would advise anybody to show their commitment by buying a season ticket. You also get a 10% discount on the price of your uh, ticket uh, included so financially it's good.